Well, today I'm excited to introduce you all to Angelica. Uh, she's been working alongside me and I've been working alongside her for a little bit of time now. Uh, she runs a dog training business along with other services called Courteous Canine. And the uh, reason why she's here today is just to share a little bit about her experience. Um, so if you wouldn't mind starting by sharing a little bit of, int of an introduction of, uh, you know, your business and what, what you do in it. Hi, um, I'm Angelica Steinker. I'm a certified dog behavior consultant. I have three different certifications um, for dog behavior consulting. I have been running Curtis Canine for more than 20 years. I love what I do, but um, I'm a huge advocate of getting coaching and, and reaching out and getting help. And um, I was going through some staffing issues and I wanted to um, steer my business into some specific directions. And um, I was very much on the fence about working with Derek because there's a lot of people out there that um, over promise and under deliver. And so I had a lot of hesitation and I, my biggest regret is not doing it sooner. Um, so if you are, um, you know, on the fence, please don't torture yourself by doing that. Um, move forward and um, run. Don't walk to hire Derek. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, I guess if you don't mind me asking, like, do you remember how we first connected? Um, definitely through Facebook. Okay, that's cool. So then um, with that, where was the business at, you know, before we started working together, if you can recall? So we were going through a tech migration or like we're kind of on the tail end of having completed that. So we were in a really good position to look at changing some processes and improving things, um, which we're still working on, but thanks to you have already made... Um, um, excellent changes. Um, and um, we were, you know, needing to make some staff changes. So we were in a less than ideal place. And now we're in a more of an ideal place. Okay, so initially, it was kind of like maybe operational, or uh, some tactical shifts that you wanted to make in the business to, you know, get somewhere other than where you currently were at, or you saw a destination you wanted to go to. And, you know, realize that maybe some support might assist you getting there. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. And also, you know, we wanted to learn more about marketing. Um, okay. So that's something like I had noticed that um, the market was shifting and I had noticed that um, things were not um, the what things that I was using previously were not working as well. Right. So you can freak out and, and complain and, and be upset that things are have changed or you can adjust. So, you know, right. um, I, I needed to make changes and uh, I would prefer to do that with somebody who's knowledgeable and can guide me than to reinvent the wheel myself. For sure. And the other piece too sometimes is that some people just kind of cross their fingers and toes and hope that the market will shift back or the referrals will come in. And I try to reinforce them, like, you know, hoping that things are going to change is, is not a strategy I would suggest, but learning how to market yourself better and emphasize the benefits of your particular service and how it might differ from others uh, can be very beneficial for, you know, the consumer to be like, oh, I like that. I like how they run stuff. So could you give me a little bit of insight, like, uh, if possible, of tangible ways that, you know, the where the business is now? So we've made some really positive staff changes that, um, as I've told you, I'm super grateful to you for. Um, really what's been the, uh, if I could interject, what's yeah, been the sure. benefit of that? Like, how does, how has that affected things, making some of those staffing transitions? Well, it's improved my quality of life because as a business owner, if um, you have staff members that are not ideally suited for um, what they're doing, um, it, it comes back to you. It complicates operations. It complicates marketing. It complicates, sure. um, for me, it increases my stress level um, tremendously. So um, the, the result has been that our, operations are better and you know it's um empowering and it's fun and it's like 
liberating and awesome and wonderful. So very, very well, what's interesting to me too, because I get to see the front and the the back end of things is like, I remember having conversations where, you know, there's doubts and can we even find the right staff or should we just try to make the best out of the cards that we have currently or what we've been dealt? And I'm like, no, sometimes you outgrow your existing team members. And if we deliberately, uh, you know, look to attract people that we want to work with, we're going to have a much higher likelihood of, of, of doing so instead of just getting what we get. And like, literally, I remember you talking about having sleepless nights because of some staffing challenges, where yeah. one of the biggest things you told me, which was not that, uh, like, not far in the past was like, Oh, my gosh, I had the best sleep ever, because this, yeah. essentially, this issue got dealt with, and we found yeah. an appropriate team member that can really help us bring the business back to where we want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, there was an absence of confidence that I, um, even though I've done this for a very long time, I didn't have um, uh, confidence that I would find the right person. And, um, and you know, you helped me with that tremendously. And um, I'm, I'm very, very thankful about that. So um, sometimes... Well we don't even know how we're getting in our own way and um, just having the benefit of somebody outside of us For to sure. say like, you know, well, but what about this angle and what about this and, um, and being encouraging. And, you know, one of the things about your coaching is like, you don't ever judge us. You're always very caring towards us. And, and, and there's never any criticism, but there's this, this endless, persistence of the belief in our growth mm -hmm. and and that is um very powerful it sounds like maybe a small thing um but I think it's been one of the most powerful things for me is to have somebody that is like no I work with people that I know are good eggs and I have confidence in them and I believe in them and I know that you guys can do this and it, it's it's very very powerful to us as your clients. Oh, that's amazing. Well, I appreciate you sharing that because I don't think anyone's ever really explained it in that matter, manner rather, but it kind of, when you were saying those words, it made me think of, you know, somewhat of maybe I emphasize on being able to see the potential that people have that might be unrecognized and doing whatever I can to assist them that if they want more, you know, how can I, uh, how can I help you get there? Yeah, and I think intrinsically, you know, almost all of us are highly social beings, right? And so to have that social support and to have um, that um, like little core is, is for me, has been incredibly powerful. So, um, well, especially as a business owner in this industry, because more often than not, like you're alone, right? You can't talk about lots of these things with team members because their perspective is much different as an employee versus an employer. But also it's like, well, the people around you physically are, mm -hmm. could be competition or they might not be open-minded of, you know, networking or, you know, collaborating. So there's this missing aspect of community and like where you can openly talk about real issues as a business owner and, you know, not be shut down or you have your family that's an employee be like, you should just do this. And you're like, you have, you're like, you have no idea that you have yeah. no idea because yeah, what exactly. you're saying is, is totally askew because I've dealt with it too. Right. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. I built a group around what I needed as well mm -hmm. because I have family and friends that are like, oh, you should do this in your business. And yeah. I'm trying to hold it together being like, oh yeah, how many businesses have you grown from start to, uh, to like successful but I don't, yeah. yeah, I try to be respectful. I'm like, oh, fair yeah. enough. But that's a big piece that is is sometimes missed that people don't realize they're missing is, is that that sense of community. But yeah, I, I very much agree. And um, to me, it's the type of community, right? Because it's positive reinforcement trainers. Yeah. I don't want to have community with force trainers. I don't want to have community with people that are not like running a service oriented business, right? Because that's what we do. Right. And so it's not really helpful to talk to somebody who, you know, like, I don't know, uh, sells 
um, uh, really amazing anti-pole harnesses or something. You know, that's a really great product and that's really wonderful and that's great. And there may be some overlap, but it's, it's really different running a service business and running a positive reinforcement um, service business and, um, and, and then connecting to people that are in that precise niche. And that's, to me, has always been a challenge. I've had an incredibly difficult time, despite being an active member in a lot of professional organizations, it's right. been really difficult to connect because like you said, people are guarded and they think, oh, you're going to take my idea. Um, and there's this, this um, um, there's no path to building trust with somebody that you don't know to like form a community of like-minded people right. to help each other in your business. It, it just does, it just doesn't, at least I never found one other than working with you. Well, and that's the thing too, is where we haven't really touched on that, but there's a community of like-minded people um, within uh, like my membership, not that it's a membership site, but my program. So I call them members um, where they chime in and have their own conversations and, and mm -hmm. conversations in groups where they can bounce ideas off of each other on calls, off calls, wherever, where it's yeah. just a lot more collaborative, uh, yeah. which is, you know, a huge piece that's missing in the industry. I build a collaboration in my local community of five different businesses that were in similar uh, niches, but we all prop each other's up. I mean, I don't know anyone else, especially on the other side of the fence for as far as methodology goes, that's like, hey, let's, let's collaborate for, uh, you know, a like minded goal of bringing, you know, gentle uh, handling towards, you know, the masses. So yeah. it just it's like, it, it's incredibly empower empowering, but it's also really beneficial in, in so many ways. So I guess, um, is there anything else that you know you want to showcase? And it's okay if uh, that's 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 great the the staffing uh, progress. But is there anything else that you wanted to mention as far as you know where the business is at right now? So I, I guess what I'd like to say is you know I I mentioned that I wanted help with marketing, um, and I knew that social media would be a huge part of that. And I will be honest and say that I really. Um, despite recognizing that I needed help in that area, was not looking forward to any work regarding social media marketing. Um, and what has been a tremendous surprise to me is how much I've enjoyed the very thing that I thought I was going to dread. Um, and I, you know, I want to be honest and say I do have staff that help me, so it's not me entirely that's doing right. it. I had to do it seven days a week. Uh, it would be, of course, more of a task and and um, but um, it's it's a lot of fun because of the way that you coach, right? Because you're always telling us in a way not to sell, right? Like in in the traditional way of selling, that is not what you ever advocate. You're right. advocating relationship building. You're advocating um, meeting needs and helping. And that to me is all incredibly fun. And then, you know, um, I remember like early on when you would say, you know, at the, I know that you kind of put it in tears of where you're coaching us, you know, when we were like at the more elementary school level, um, how you were like, well, have fun with it. You know, the emphasis right. was on fun, you know, and then also how you, you don't ever like, you help us understand what post could have be improved on um, or what comment could be improved on, but there's never anything wrong, right? You don't, you don't ever like, oh, like, right. you know, what like, comment was that? You know, like nobody ever gets like beaten up. It's like, you know, it a, any any reply is a good reply, which is makes it fun because then mm. you you don't feel like you're gonna make a mistake you know you're using a reinforcement schedule that's scientifically called scientifically called um differential differential um outcome effect um and it it basically means that all responses of our on our part are reinforced and then the really really good ones are just reinforced more and that makes it really 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 fun so thank you for that yeah my pleasure and one of the biggest things i try to reinforce is 
when you're learning anything marketing related is there's no right or wrong. You test stuff. And that can take some of the pressure off of, I don't want to suck at this new thing, or I don't want to fail at it. I'm like, there is no failure. If you're swinging, you're going to hit at some point, right? And if you, but you, if you never step up to the batter's plate and you never take a swing, you're never going to hit. So I'm like, anyone who steps up to the plate and starts doing any kind of marketing is probably in the vast minority of people of the top, you know, one to 10%. So you're already like miles ahead of just, just starting and testing some stuff. Now, obviously I want to help everyone make the best out of their time and their use and, you know, provide the most benefit to people and also, you know, have their own needs fulfilled, but it's really just trying to gamify it a little bit where it becomes more enjoyable. And I mean, lots of us as trainers love to learn, or we wouldn't continue to take courses and have 16 letters behind our names. But what we often do is we continue to take courses instead of investing in other skill sets within the business. I'm all for continued ed education, but there could be a bit more balance between uh, dog training skills or behavior coaching and all those things versus, hey, running a business because they go together and more and more training skills doesn't is not going to fix, for example, I, can, I have nobody to, to work with. Yeah. No, and, and I think you're touching on something that's a super important issue in our community of positive reinforcement training um, that uh, people, um, there's almost a social moray against being successful. And um, I, I see that um, there's a distinct pattern that if you look at trainers who are um, gentle, and then you're looking at trainers who use, sadly, other methods that are not gentle, um, it's generally the non-gentle trainers that are better marketers. And I think in part because they have to be, because really people want to love their dogs and they want to be kind and generous and caring and bond with their animals. And so in, in my personal opinion, the uh, uh, forceful training is all, always a harder sell, but that means that they are generally more skilled at um, sales and marketing. And that's something that I'm so glad you're out there and changing because we, we need that as a community. Well, and that's a, a tough piece of it that you bring up too, is because sometimes if you talk about sales or marketing, then people will feel like, well, I don't want to be like them. And I'm like, I'm not saying you should be like them. I'm not like, I, we were just talking about this on a call. Like there's, there's multiple ways of marketing and selling just mm -hmm. like there is, there's multiple ways of dog training. I'm trying to bring the proactive, progressive, kind, compassionate way and change the mindset of like what marketing and selling is. And mm -hmm. yes, there's absolutely the other side of the coin, but mm -hmm. what if you could be a gentle trainer, but also market in a way that is in line and sell and that's in, in alignment with your personality type. I think it's absolutely possible. And I've had to learn to bridge the gap of these two because early, usually when you learn early stages of marketing and selling, it's mm -hmm. more on this side. You know, mm -hmm. the things that you would not want to do or not want to see or not partake in. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, it was no different than when I started dog training a long time ago where I was a more compulsive, a compulsion-based trainer where the only thing I knew was what I saw and learned and what people taught me, which was being more physically aversive. And mm -hmm. once I was like, I don't really, this is out of alignment internally with how I feel, but I'm like, this is the way I guess. And then I started learning otherwise. And I was like, oh my God, this is way different. This feels right. This feels not right. And then I started to change completely overhauled how I, I worked with dogs. Mm -hmm. I'm not excited or proud about my past, but that crossover gave me a lot of perspective and also helped me identify in this example, well, there can be a crossover of selling. And what I want to do is help you guys not have to do the crossover just start on the on the on a side that's more in alignment with what you want in your personal. well it's it's a great example with the you know gentle versus non-gentle training because um the sales can be everything that you know we consider positive reinforcement training to be ethical 
kind, respectful, loving, helpful, meeting right. needs, you know, all that kind of stuff. Relationship building. Relationship building. That all of that applies to effective sales. So all of that is sales. So the very thing that positive reinforcement trainers are obsessed with is really good sales. They just don't realize it. Yeah. Uh, and the the piece of it, um, just making that distinction that lots of times when people think about sales, they're really thinking about the other side of where, you know, mm -hmm. you're stuck with a pushy person who is really trying to force a decision and cram a sale down your throat where you're like, you don't even know if this thing would help me because you asked zero questions. You just told me that it's perfect for me. And I feel heard not, you know, and so that's not what we want to be either. So anyways, we could talk at length about this, I think, which is, is positive, but uh, I guess we'll just move on to, you know, were there any unexpected benefits from the course training that you might have not anticipated? Well, I touched on this in the in the previous um, question. Um, mostly for me, how much fun I'm having. I'm I, I'm going to be um, transparent and say that yes, it's a lot of learning. Like there, it, there are many many layers, and you you were you know open and honest from day one that there's different layers, and then you know you start out easy and you build to different layers. And the ultimate is, you know, black belt and, you know, I'm not there yet, but I will be someday. Um, but the, despite the fact that it is a little bit daunting when you first get into the program and you're like, oh, I'm here. And then this is black belt. You, you are a true dog trainer at heart because you helped us break it down. There's never an expectation for the person who like me was new to do it at the black belt level. You right. have approximations mm -hmm. that help us have improvements at every level. So that was something unexpected. And then the, the other thing is like how much fun, you know, it's, it's when you're set up for success and you're coached in a way where you can work at the level that you're currently capable of, putting out there um it becomes fun and and then you're always emphasizing to have fun you know like with everything that we're doing whatever it is that m me or one of the other students um clients of yours are are working on the the idea is always to have fun with it there's always a, a process that involves playfulness um process that involves meeting needs and um that makes it fun and so i i'm really and and at times still am surprised how much fun i'm having well that's perfect well i really appreciate you sharing those things uh because it's exactly you know what i try to do is simplify complicated tasks or learning into pieces that are bite size yeah. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's really similar to start becoming a dog trainer, right? You know, however many years ago, when all of us started, when you're really beginning that growth curve, you're like, there's so much I don't know. And this count contradicts that. And I don't know what's going on. And it's just like, uh, you know, a fire hose spraying water into your face. But then you start to catch your breath. And then you start to be like, okay, I actually have some fundamentals here. So adding another piece to it becomes a lot simpler and a lot more enjoyable. And then another piece, you're like, ooh, that concept I can put over here. And for me, that's where I really want people to be is feeling confident that they can, you know, uh, market effectively or just develop their business in whatever direction they want. It doesn't have to be growth per se, but it might be more fulfillment. You know, I don't like doing certain tasks or I don't enjoy certain, like, let's pretend it was like, I'm not a super fan of hosting group classes, but I love private sessions. My part of my job is to support people doing things that one financially makes sense, but two is fulfilling to them and they enjoy because when we're excited, when we're fulfilled, when we're creative, everybody wins, but especially us, because in an industry where burnout is incredibly simple to corner yourself into, mm -hmm. we need to design our lives intentionally. Agreed.
So last thing, if someone was on the fence and you kind of already answered this, but I'll let you answer it again about, you know, considering taking my marketing accelerator course, business expansion, et cetera, or just wanted to even chat with me about potentially how, you know, if I could help them, what do you, what would you tell them? Please open yourself to Derek. Um, I think Derek, you have a gift and, um, you really care and, um, you your mission of what you want to achieve is um reflected in in all of your coaching and um i i think it's a uh, unrecoverable error if you don't work with derek <laughs> <laughs> well i won't uh go that far but i appreciate the sentiment and uh you know i appreciate you and all the hard work you've put in and it's really fun to see um, the progress of where you've been and where you are. And I mean, you were doing great stuff long before I ever came along, but I feel like, and you can, you know, address this if it's not an alignment, I just feel like you're going in more of a direction of your choosing now, uh, versus then where you might've felt like you just were tied down to go before. Yeah, I think that's a very true statement. Um, the word that keeps coming up for me is I feel empowered. And that's just something that that has been um, missing and something that is very important to me. So it's something that I value very highly. And I just had um, caught, caught kind of straight off my path and gotten to a place where um, I was not in that groove. And you've helped me get back to mm -hmm. feeling empowered and given me skills that I can use for the rest of my career um, sure. to continue that. Yeah. And that's a good point that you bring up too, is what I want to do is help people develop skill sets that, you know, they don't need to like that. They have the premises and the philosophies and the understanding to do it on their own entirely. That if we, for whatever reason, weren't working tomorrow, that you would still have those skill sets and access to those um, those abilities that they would carry you forward and you'd still make progress. So that's what I really want to do. I want to, I think empower is a great word. I'd, I'd love to empower people. And also really, I, I mean, there's nothing more that brings me joy than noticing it potential in someone else and convincing them that it's possible and then them doing it. And I like, I just, it's, it's incredible because it reminds me back of the days when I was working with like, it's different, but along the same lines with shelter animals mm -hmm. where you, you like spend some time with them and you know, they're up for adoption, but not moving anywhere. And they're just like, you can see the potential of where they can go, but no one else can. People are walking by all oh, this dog's this, all oh, that dog's that. And you're like, I swear, just give them a chance. And then you physically show the people, the potential adopters, like, this is an amazing dog. And I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And just that third person perspective, my outside perspective, I think, uh, you know, can be beneficial to people. Yep. Behavior really is everything. <laughs> uh, and multiple species. Yep. Okay, well, thank you so much for this time, Angelica. I really appreciate you getting on here, but also more than anything, I'm glad that we connected and we've been able to work together. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And um, I can't wait to do more work. I'm not going anywhere. And I hope we'll do this again in a year or whatever period of time. And I have more awesome success to report. Absolutely, same.